Howdy folks, Bronson here. Oh, I've been waiting a long time to do this video. So this is a collection showcase of uh, different master sets. A lot of you know that I normally make parody videos and satire videos. This is a little bit out of the norm. This is a, a collection showcase. Uh, it's been in the works for a long time to do this video. Probably uh, a whole four hours of time that I've uh, I've wanted to do this. And the whole point of this video is that it's time to stop being quiet about Flesh and Blood. Now, I, I wanted to go over the history of these master sets. So they're, it varies depending on the level of juice in each of these binders. Uh, there's different time periods in which I've collected uh, certain ones. And some are complete, non-complete. I'll go over into that in a bit. But it's been uh, it's been very quiet of late, and I wanted to really showcase this collection. Now, early in 2020, I got into the game around August 2020. Uh, let's go with uh, the first thing I started collecting, which is non-foil WTR Arcane Rising. So after I fell in love with this game, quite literally and figuratively, I bought a bunch of bulk. And from that bulk, I started making a non-foil master set. So this is WTR. Uh, I bought a lot of these cards for, you know, pennies on the dollar. Like a lot of these commons were two to three cents each. Uh, these Majestics were a little bit more pricey. Uh, for all in all, this probably took me around $400 to collect around August 2020. And I loved it. I loved how the binders had it succinctly in uh, the nine page format. So if you look at, um, like, let's say Katsu Ninja right here, right? So you have Katsu, you have the M's, you have the super rares. Over here, you have the three rares, and then you have the commons after that. Like you see here, the two page for the commons, one page for the rare. And overall, I, I loved it. Set collecting in this game is just amazing. Once it's in the binder, you can see it all uh, just beautifully laid out. And I thought it was really fun to do. So I collected this. And afterwards, I was like, you know what? That was really easy. That was only two, three hundred, or that no, was like three to four to five hundred dollars. It was it was very cheap at the time. It probably around three hundred, four hundred dollars. Uh, so I graduated. I said, like, you know what? That was that was baby bear. That, that was way, way, way too easy. And I really love doing it. What's the next step up that I can do? I need to get a little bit more juicier, right? So from there, I went on to the big dog. And that is, of course, Rainbow Foil WTR on Arcane Rising. Now, when I did so, I was a little bit of a dummy. I was smart in the fact that I upgraded my binder from a D-ring, so it didn't destroy the sides of the cards. But I was stupid in the fact that I bought a lot of the commons and rares first, and I didn't buy the Majestics. So I had a lot of the Majestics in my cart for WTR for $50 each. And I thought to myself, you know what? It's a little pricey. I want to wait for these cards to come down in price. I'm just going to focus on the commons and rares for now. Lo and behold, certain entities had a hold my beer moment and prices skyrocketed for all these cards. Now, on one hand, I was completely happy because my collection had increased in value. You know, one might say that Bronson, that's a good thing. The cards that you purchased are now worth something. These are not worth 20 cents, 40 cents a card. They are now worth 10, $20 a card in late 2020. This is a very rapid rate of growth uh, for your collection. And on, on one hand, you'd be right. But on another hand, you'd be completely wrong in the fact that I want to complete this and I was unable to. And at the heart of collecting, I think that that is what a lot of people have in their hearts and in their guts is a feeling of, I don't have enough, I want more, I have a goal to make out, and I have this goal. But reality sunk in, and I thought, you know what? I got a wallet, but 
it ain't that deep. So I've got to make other plays out there. I've got to do other things out there in the market to one day finally be able to complete this. So at the end of 2020, I put a pause to buying a lot of these cards. Um, this is a non-complete set, uh, though it's it's very, it, it's, it's almost complete. I mean, it, it has a bunch of the commons and rares, just doesn't have any of the M's and it doesn't have uh, any of the L's. The only L I had was... Uh, this the tectonic plating i love bravo and i bought this for 150 dollars. and at the time i thought wow that is an insane amount of money to buy on this card and i had instant regret when i purchased this and then uh three months later i thought it was the most smartest thing that i ever did in my life uh, not probably the smartest but it was yeah I'm, i was very happy with my transaction after the fact it's funny how that is the Decisions you make in the moment seem very idiotic, but then eventually work out. So I put a pause on this at the end of 2020 because my wallet was not deep enough. But at the same time, I respected the collectability. I was happy in a way that I couldn't fill it out completely because it shows that there's collectability in this game. And of course, you know, the cards went up in value, but more of like, hey... This is something to tr strive for in the ultra long term. This is kind of like more of a, you know, <laughs> way, way, way in the future to complete. So then in 2021, I was like, you know what? I, I really love the rainbow foils, but man, I would like to complete it with a little less out lie or out <laughs> outpouring of money from my wallet. So I kind of pivoted. I pivoted to unlimited. And I actually did complete this. So this is a complete rainbow foil version sets of WTR and Arcane Rising. So these right here are the promo cards. Uh, for this, I for the unlimited one version, right, for the, the master set, I like to put the promo of the rainbow foil. And then the other one that I was just showing you, I like to put the cold foil promo. I thought that was kind of cool. It's like the, the, the other one has the highest tier rarity. This has like all rainbow foil. And I do love this collection. Honestly, this is one of my most favorite like set collections in Flesh and Blood, the Unlimited. The, the other one is the, the first edition, but like Unlimited Pops, man. Like if you look at a lot of the, the, the Rainbow Foils uh, from Belgium, uh, they really, really pop. I've got to go back. And when I was doing these initially, I was, I was kind of stupid and I did perfect fits. I want to um, correct that. But... I was able to complete this in a relatively short amount of time. I had purchased a lot of uh, WTR Unlimited booster boxes uh, in the past, and I had gotten mo a lot of these cards already. Um, the big ones I needed, I think, were the Heart of Fyandel, and um, I think I needed a lot of the Ark uh, uh, Legendaries and uh, Majestics and such. But uh, this made me really happy. Uh, it took around maybe $1,000 total to totally complete. Uh, buying a bunch of... Most of that money was the legendaries and the um, fables. But uh, other than that, it was uh, really nice to collect. And I, I, I think that right here I had Command and & Conquer and Art of War Cold, or Rainbow Foil. I already had that from just opening boxes. So it was nice to put that in a nice completed binder. And again, like I said in the beginning, it's nice that everything is succinct and everything feels like uh, it, it just looks very nice when it's, you know, in the nine page binders. Uh, the master set um, just really uh, pops. And this is a 500 page top deck binder. And I upgraded it from the one I had in the beginning where it was like the D ring, which is uh, definitely recommended. So... After this, in 2021, I filled this out, $1,000, went into bulk. I bought a bunch of WTR, Arcane Rising uh, bulk. Um, as you know, I own 1% of the print run of both WTR and Arcane Rising first edition. And the reason I did that is because it was an insane thing to do. Um, you know, anyone can collect a set like this. Uh, not everyone can buy 1% of the bulk of the print run of the first two sets, <laughs> which... Uh, I was very happy to accomplish in 2023 with the help of many, many community members out there, you know, and that was, that's probably like the juiciest thing I have in my collection. And 
the thing I'm most proud of is is the bulk alpha and bulk w uh, arcane rising first edition like one percent it's it encompasses a good amount of space in my room but uh it's worth it it's uh it's, it's a great collection so that was the 2022 to 2023 goal and uh that re really leads me to 2024 and it's been quiet man it was uh initially very loud in the collectability space for flesh and blood when it was 2021 2020 but it's been uh, it's been pretty quiet, and uh, it really kind of led me to my next thing that I'm trying to pursue. So I uh, got this in the mail about ten minutes ago from a very very trusted individual out there in the community. I trust him with my life. Um, I'm gonna open it. Up. I have my camera right here. Yeah, the same package. So uh, without further ado, this is the, the crown jewel of this set. That's right, Mask of Momentum, Cold Foil. Again, uh, I really appreciate the trusted individual who uh, transacted with me. I was on Discord at 1 a.m. and did a nice clean transaction, very, uh, very smooth. And this card looks incredibly beautiful in person. So, you guessed it. I'm going to go back to WTR and Arcane Rising 1st Edition, trying to get that master set of 1st Edition cards for the most premium version of the card. So, I don't have any of the M's. And for the legendaries, I only have the one other card, which is the Tectonic Plating. Um, that's definitely going to be in this collection. But... I need the other three L's, I believe, the M's, and just various different cards in here to really complete this set. And I think this is a good goal. I mean, if you think about the real the collectability of these cards and, and how soft the market's been for a while, it's it's been wild. I mean, I never thought these cards would go down into the one thousand dollar range ever. I mean, they were at 2000 for for quite a while. And honestly, I, I don't care if they have like little dings. Like I think Tectonic Plate has like a, a little chunk right here. Um, I just want a binder copy and, you know, and call it a day. But even still, the binder, these are like only 1100 of these have ever been made. The Rainbow Foil M's are even more rare from what I've heard. Uh, the Fables, I'll probably pass on <laughs> just because those are... Those are a bit quite, uh, unless I hit the lottery or something, uh, those are definitely out of uh, purview. But yeah, you never know. You never know what uh, fate may bring. Um, you know, this game is probably going to be around for another ten to 15,000 years. And along the way, there's it's a good amount of opportunities for my uh, descendants to pick them up. You know, maybe great, 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 great grandchildren to uh, complete this set. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's about it for the collection journey that I've just told you. So essentially I've been collecting a lot of master sets in flesh and blood and, and I love this game. I love the collectability. I've been collecting this game on for almost five years now, if, if I think back. And it's just been a joy throughout the time, ups and downs. Honestly, it's better during the downs. It's better when it's quiet because... There's not as much competition. You can buy what you want without, you know, spending uh, too much. It's like everything's BOGO, right? As, you know, the mass and whatever, it's BOGO it, when it's uh, down. And I think that it's been quiet for way too long. There's been a lot of, you know, getting this late into the video, there's, there's a lot of high-end collectors that maintain their quietness and buy things um, that are you know valuable like these these beautiful cards and they, they do it on the down low and when they do that it doesn't increase the price on the open market because people don't really see that going on and i think that you're gonna see a lot of these things dry up i mean these cards right now if you go to tcg player or anything it's hard to find a lot of these rainbow foils they're they're pretty much gone there, there's not that many collections out there um, that people are just selling anymore. It's not the beginning of the game. I mean, it's been like over five years. So again, just wanted to make the video showcasing the
the collection. Hope you've enjoyed. And overall, Flesh and Blood is incredibly collectible. And I think that it's been quiet for way too long. And I hope it gets a lot more loud. Cheers, man.